Okay, so we're going to emulate a two-player game here. I'm going to play both sides to show you a session of Super Fantasy Brawl. From one team, we have the orange team. The heroes included there are uh, Gwen. Gwen is uh, this hero here. We also have Kilgore. Kilgore is this hero here. And then we also have Marius, which is this hero over there. Beautiful minis, beautiful heroes with their own respective decks. This is a purple uh, team from that side and they're sitting over there. Uh, so let me put one base so that you remember the color. Therefore these heroes and this player board is for uh, the orange team, uh, sorry the purple team. And this side over there is for the orange team. In this uh, group of champions we have uh, Akhit, which is this beautiful gorgeous mini over there. We also have a uh, Goldor. And last but not least, we have Tzu Xiao, which is this mini over here. So, orange, purple. What I have done is I have collected the six action cards from each of the hero champions and uh, shuffled them in order to make um, one common uh, action deck with uh, respectively 18 cards. I have shuffled thoroughly. And then I can draw five cards to start. Uh, which will be my starting hand. Of course, I can check the cards and do a mulligan, uh, meaning I can uh, discard all of them and draw equally equal cards back into my hand. Now, uh, just a small reminder, uh, I have already done the drafting. We can have a, either have a casual draft or a competitive draft. So the teams now already uh, are ready. They have placed, each team has placed on the starting location, which has this icon. So one, two, three, four, five spots in one gate and uh, five spots on the other gate over there. They're starting uh, heroes and we're ready to go. <clears throat> now, first challenge card already open. It's still inactive because it's in this location over here. It will move on the next slot and worth one victory point in the next round. Is half two or more champions adjacent to um, uh, Ragrill's statue. Ragrill's statue is this one. That means that these three sides are eligible, but also these three sides, which are not yellow, are eligible because all of those uh, have the statue in uh, an adjacent hex, which is the center. So all of those are adjacent. So that's a cool thing. Probably they're going to go for it, both of them, I suppose. But in any case, <coughs> let's start playing. First, the token goes randomly to the orange team. So they will start the round. The first thing they do in the round, and I'm just going to only describe it once, so that as a reminder, I have done a, a, an extensive how to play video, so you can see the rules on the other video that's included in the description. The first thing that you do is uh, you check, uh, you go through the scoreboard phase. So uh, during your round, the active, we have the first player's round, then the second player's round, and then we go uh, back to um, the actual advance of the challenge cards here. But in each round, the player goes through three steps. First, scoreboard phase, see if they are able to score any victory points. Then they have the activation phase where they expand cores and play cards from their hand. And then they have the upkeep phase where they discard remaining cards and draw five more car five cards for a total of five cards in their hand and refresh their course of magic. Right, uh, keep in mind that uh, only because it's going to be referred in different cards, uh, the blue is a manipulation, magic core, the red is a destruction, and the yellow is the creation. Okay, so let's start. This is a hand uh, of, this is a hand of uh, this team over here. So, they also going to shuffle the cards and draw five for the starting hand. This is going to be the drawing hand, the deck here and the drawing hand, hand over there. Okay, so we're ready to go. Now, starting with the first player, the orange, they get their cards. And let's see what they have available. This card can only be played by uh, 
Akit. This is Akit icon. This is the icon for Xu Xiao, Xu Xiao. And this is the icon for Goldar. Okay, so I think Goldar is close to this um, Ragrill statue. So he's going to make a move for moving close to that because it's going to score a victory point at some point and at least he wants to make it difficult for their um, opponents as well. So he's going to play this card, Mi Hartis. So it is a skill card. Uh, first of all, it, you, he uses as much movement as he wants, so he will use one and one, two. Oh, I forgot to put uh, the randomly drawn traps. So uh, first, let's say these are potential locations for the traps, and each side is putting two traps, trap tokens, so that there are always four on the board. Okay, now we're good. Uh, Goldar is going to play Mihartis, where he already moved one, two, over there. Now he can draw one, and Goldar allies gain one strength and one movement until the end of the turn. That's a good one because not Goldar, but the rest of uh, the champions will have plus one movement. So I keep it handy. But he also, uh, we also have the draw one, uh, which means simply that I'm going to draw one more card in my hand. But uh, be prepared that uh, the reason that I'm able to play this yellow card is I need to expand this yellow core in order to be able to play one yellow card. Now this is the card I drew, another um, a response card may be handy for defense purposes, but I need to have a red um, core, okay. So let's see the rest of my cards, I'm thinking of um, Maybe moving again at least once, and then I can I, I can attack with. Uh, actually, I can move twice and attack with a direct shot. That means I need to have a line of sight in order to attack uh, with a harpoon. But then I'm going to pull them, so I don't want to pull them towards me because they're also going to be close to the challenge score opportunity. So maybe then I do... Hmm. Okay, let's see the rest of the cards. Let's advance uh, Akhet maybe. Or I do the double strike. I have the, I have the red icon available. So... Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand one of my cores to do a standard action because this is a good card that I like to have uh, available. Uh, the Harpoon Strike. Actually. Because it has a good range as well. So I'm going to expand uh, one card, one core, the blue core. And then... Uh, uh, by doing so, I can move um, one and plan. Planning is putting one of your cards on your top of your draw deck, so you ensure that it will go uh, handy. So I plan, I put it there, so I'm definitely going to draw it. And I can uh, move one, because all the standard moves uh, include moving one and doing something else, unless you do two movement points. So I think <coughs> I'm going to uh, move one here with Goldor, so that I'm in uh, adjacent to my uh, target, and then uh, I still have one core, a red core to expand. <coughs> I'm thinking of uh, probably doing the dash. That's a good card, but I'm going to... Okay, so I'm playing also the red core. A destruction core so I can play this uh, double strike what I'm doing now is uh, of course I can attack uh, someone adjacent there is no one at the moment because I'm here but what I can do is I can use a pre-attack uh, uh, ability which is dash 2 so I can dash in a straight line that gives me the ability to, to 1 2 dash and come here 
and then there's no one to attack adjacent so I, I, I ignore the remaining of the text because plainly I'm not attacking okay so I've done it <coughs> I've played full uh, my possibilities I need to discard now I go through my upkeep phase I discard my cards and then I refresh my course so that I can have them ready for the next round and I also draw five new cards one two three four five and this is my hand so there you have it this was my first turn from the orange team moving to the purple team uh, if they go through the scoreboard phase they don't there's nothing to score then they move to activation phase they pick their hand so I think they need to close in and that's a good idea actually because uh, by expanding one red core I can play closing in with uh, uh, Marius so closing in means moving two one two I'm moving there because I want to also be adjacent to uh, Ragrill statue I'm fulfilling also the requirement and this way I'm blocking Goldor from snatching this uh, challenge and one victory point on the next round but also I can perform the attack the attack is um, uh, adjacent so I'll do perform an attack with strength 2 then we have the pre-attack uh, condition which is dash 2 and if Marius is bloodied the attack gains double he's not bloodied, bloodied will be I think if he has uh, at least half of uh, their hit points remaining uh, rounding down he's not bloody we just started that will be a good opportunity but for sure what he can do is uh, uh, he can attack uh, goldar because they are adjacent just uh, as a reminder the attack sequence is very simple you use as much of the movement as you wish i've done it i perform any pre-attack uh, abilities uh, i can dash if i want i choose not to do so and then uh, I'm attacking with uh, the adjacent hit, that means that I'm inflicting 2 strength minus uh, the uh, strength of Goldar, which is 1, so 2 minus 1, 1, and of course at this stage uh, the defender can play any reaction cards, we don't have any reaction cards, so we don't play, and um, with the resolve any uh, uh, after post attack uh, effects and then any post attack effects of the attacker from first from the defender and then from the attacker so none of that is happening so it was one damage two minus one one that means that goldar is receiving one damage on his card from this strike and this is expand okay next i have a blue core and yellow core a creation core and a manipulation core manipulation is blue creation is yellow i think it's a good opportunity to strike again because he's in a, in a good position so you can do but you need to play a red core which i don't have maybe i can attack with uh, the overpower okay that will create uh, also another attack there is a fury but this is um, from uh, Kilgore over there so he can move and make an, er an attack in all these adjacent areas that's a good one and heal one and there is also the response okay so what he's doing is he's playing uh, we're playing the yellow creation core expanding it and uh, moving so we can move uh, one no, I'm not moving at all I'm inflicting adjacent damage I give the opportunity uh, uh, to my player to uh, choose if they're going to play any reaction cards they don't okay because remember we don't have any reaction cards then it's two again minus one that means that another strike is for uh, Goldar so two hits so far not doing well and then he can do we could do a dash before attack we didn't after attack if uh, Marius is bloodied force one uh, which we don't 
we're not blooded so again this is spent one more card maybe i have the blue core i don't have any blue cards so i cannot play any of those so then i suppose i can do a plan with my blue core and uh, maybe keep um, keep this card planned because it will be handy since he's in an attack position engaged and i want to have uh, flexibility so i'm spending the blue uh, manipulation core to do a plan, meaning I can move one, I don't move one, oh actually I can move one, I can come here for better protection and then still fulfilling the condition and then I'm planning uh, by putting one of my cards as a draw pile here in the first um, slot and the remaining cards are discarded, they go there, I refresh my cores and I draw a hand of five cards. Now, from drawing five cards, one of the ones planned is going to be in my five card hand. There you have it, of course. So we can use it in the next turn. So this is my hand. Okay, so uh, this is a full round, both player one and player two. Player one and pl uh, player one is the orange and player two is the purple, had a chance to go. Then we move to the third step, which is uh, actually uh, advancing the challenge track. That means that now this goes here, which is in effect, it can be scored during the scoreboard phase, and a new card is coming out. The new card is have two or more champions adjacent to Ragrill's statue. So there is an enhanced uh, possibility to score more victory points there, so there are too many things happening here for the moment, and that's cool. I remind you the way to win this game is to gather five victory points, and you gain victory points depending on the timing that you grab one of those challenge cards, one or two victory points respectively, and by knocking out one of your opponent champions for the round, which gives you the opportunity to level up and gain one victory point as well. Now, back to the orange team. They go through the scoreboard phase. Uh, they would be in a position to score here if they uh, um, had two or more champions adjacent to uh, um, uh, Ragrell's statue. Actually, it's the same card twice, now I, I just realized. Uh, they don't, they only have one. So I'm thinking that they may need to move one of the remaining heroes, either uh, Zhao or uh, Akhet, closer to uh, the action. So, let's see what they're going to do. There are no cards for Zhao. Oh, this is a good one, Inner Fire. So it has free movement, it is a skill card. Okay. So, I expand my yellow core, then I can do this uh, skill card. Before doing it, I can make the movement, so I can move up to three. So let's say I don't want to move through there because it's going to be an immediate activation of the trap. So one, two, uh, three, over there. And then spend, uh, we can return one uh, a destruction card from your discard pile to our hand and Akhet's attacks gain plus one strength until the end of the turn. So let's see if there are anything, any good red cards that we can pick up back in our hand. I think there was a good one of... Uh, the double strike was a good one, wasn't it? Yeah, because you can do attack of two and you can also dash and make a double. That's a good one. Okay, so I'm going to return this card to my hand. That's a good one. And uh, I'm still here. And I also have plus one strength for my attacks this round. So that's a good start, I think, for uh, Akhit. And then ideally I would have wanted to move closer to, to do some good damage there. So maybe, yes, I want to keep the red available. So I'm spending my uh, blue core to make a double movement, so one, two, I can pass through my own allies, but I cannot end my movement there. So now I'm exactly next to my enemy, uh, enemy being Kil um, Marius. And then I can spend the red core to do the double strike. Double strike means I can do a damage of two adjacent, so it is adjacent, so I do a damage of two. Two minus uh, his defense one, that gives him a one a damage. Do we do the do the our orange team want to play any reaction? They will lose their um, their yellow core, 
and I think they rather get a hit for this at this stage rather than use it. They could block it, but anyway, they're not doing so. So they also gain one. Marius also gains one damage on his card. Uh, right. Then uh, there is also uh, the double. The double keyword means that uh, you perform again uh, the attack complete resolve the attack damage step again so again two uh, minus one one because again they're not blocking so this becomes two damage points on Marius and then this card is uh, expend, spent so it goes there so that concludes um, the round for uh, for the orange team so they have to throw discard their cards refresh their course and draw five new cards in their hand one two three four five so this is their hand at the moment again they couldn't score because they didn't had at the beginning at the scoreboard phase two uh, champions adjacent to the statue they do have now so if they still stay there they will be able to score uh, quite some uh, VPs moving forward so moving from this uh, orange team we go back to uh, the purple team which they go through their full round okay so it's uh, the purple's player turn so again going through the possibilities the purple is trying the purple player is trying to get around uh, Ragriel uh, statue because it's uh, it's a good opportunity to grab a lot of points and uh, actually now if they cannot force uh, one of the two champions of the orange team to go out of this area then they're going to uh, cannot be able to stop uh, avoiding uh, when this comes there and during their turn to grab two victory points so that's a, that will be a, a very strong blow so let's see if uh, uh, they can do some kind of push and that's a good opportunity for push but that's uh, a card that can be played uh, from uh, uh, Gwen we, uh, who is far away in action and she needs to move very close there to do so so let's see if uh, Marius or uh, Kilgore have any push effects because this is important now oh she can jump she can jump four and come one two she can go there with a jump and then push but, they, she, but they, yeah it will the push will be one so if she jumps here she will push one and uh, again the orange team will be around the statue so no good so far let's see if she can do a push of two. That's a, that's a bummer because actually they're in a tough spot. But it doesn't seem that they, they can combine it because even if they jump, that was a good combination um, for Gwen. She could jump forward and then push. But if that push was only two, then uh, she would be able to displace uh, Goldar. So. It's not working so far so maybe then they can uh, they can see if they can position themselves better for the next round I suppose uh, which would be again having two or more champions and they can uh, get at least one victory point again so yeah what they'll do is then uh, they'll have kill um, Kilgore move around the statue but again, there is no Kilgore card there. So what uh, they are going to do is they're going to spend one, um, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. No, she uh, she cannot reach the statue, so it has to be Gil, uh, Kilgore. Uh, and then, of course, since there are no. And uh, no red cards using used uh, for Kilgore. Then uh, we're going to spend the uh, blue, uh, the red uh, core, 
in order to move twice, so one, two. That puts Kilgor right next to the statue himself, so have two purple and two orange uh, teammates there, so they're both controlling for this. It wouldn't make sense because uh, the orange team goes before the purple, but then this is a, <laughs> a rare case where the same card came twice. So, um, no, that's not good because when it moves, uh, that team will control both uh, both of those cards and uh, they'll be able to score both so it's not good for them to be honest both of them will go because when it's your scoreboard phase you score as many uh, challenge cards as possible and they will be able since this will have shifted one place uh, both of them will be able for the taking available for the taking so uh, it doesn't look like as they can push or display displace uh, any of the champions of the orange team. That's a bummer. Because this would have been a good... Ah. Okay, so what they can do though is they can make all their attack around displacing one of uh, their uh, uh, those heroes. So, okay, good. Then, I will keep the jump and push for uh, Gwen, and I will also spend the yellow core to move twice, so that means that uh, she will move one, two. Then, we can spend uh, the skill to jump four, that's a good one. So she will be able to uh, spend uh, the blue core to jump four, meaning one, two, three, so she jumps there. Okay, I found a way around it. <laughs> and then she will, uh, uh, it's all about here now, no one, uh, no, another champion will play during the uh, purple uh, player's turn, but that's, that's okay because they're going to prohibit uh, the orange team from uh, grabbing three victory points, which is a lot out of five. And then, that's why she had to adapt their strategy. And then she will play this card, this card actually would allow her to perform um, one movement so she can move uh, one she doesn't then she can do a direct shot for three to five uh, uh, range there's nothing to hit in this range because it's three to five uh, sorry uh, hex is away, but uh, the important thing is that at least she can do the push where uh, she can uh, uh, perform the push effect and displays uh, Goldor. But that would mean that if I cannot perform the attack, I cannot also do the, um, the post attack effect. But then, but luckily, oh, wait a minute, this is a 3 to 5 range for a direct shot, that means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, thanks, that's a good one. That means that uh, <laughs> Akhet here is within range for the direct uh, shot from uh, the Fire Spear of Gwen. So she performs the attack, that's great because then she can, uh, she's allowed to do the the post-attack uh, effect, which is push one and displace Kilgore. So far everything looks good, that's a nice example of a good uh, complicated case, uh, which uh, really messes up a lot of the board in a good way. So, the attack is performed, so the attack is declared, that means that uh, there is a, a strength of 3, minus uh, the defense of, um, of Akhet, which is uh, 1. This should be from the non-upgraded side. So, anyway, it's the same, uh, just that we don't uh, apply the ability. Uh, then uh, let's see now if um, if there are any response cards in the hand of, uh, of the orange player. None. There is none. That means that the uh, arcade will get the full effect. Three minus one for the defense, two. That means that uh, two damage tokens will be inflicted 
on the card and that means that uh, uh, this is a go because of course in order to play that we need to expand the red core uh, this allows us a post effect to do a push pushing that direction one kill gore and saving <laughs> saving the situation for the moment because now the purple team is uh, able on the beginning of the next turn to score during the scoreboard phase because they do fulfill those two cards but that's not the case for the orange player so i like the result of this battle a lot so there you go uh, i uh, have to discard the rest of my cards refresh my course and draw five more new cards Two, three four five for the purple team great now that's the the end of the second round and we move forward to the third round so starting again with the orange team now uh, they're not Con uh, they're not uh, uh, possessing, they do not have two champions around. Um, um, first of all, before doing that, we need at the end of uh, the round two to, to go through the challenge uh, phase. So we scroll, uh, we push those uh, challenges too. So this now is uh, worth two points and this is worth one point. And then an upcoming challenge would be at least two of your champions are leveled up. I remind you. Champions level up when you knock out one of the opponents, then you flip the card and you gain one VP and you level up with add, uh, gaining the ability uh, for the remaining of your play until you're knocked down, knocked out yourself. Okay, so we're back at uh, round three with the orange player's uh, turn. Uh, they cannot score anything during the scoreboard phase. They lost the opportunity to score three victory points due to the clever play of uh, the purple team. And they know that uh, they may try to uh, uh, knock down a specific at least one because uh, no they need to knock down two so two of your chambers need to be level up it will be a tough one uh, i believe so let's go and do some damage then now uh, Zhao is there he can do a swoop swoop and he can do the focus movement one and your champions gain plus one until the end of the turn okay wait a minute did I Mars blood is attacked okay yeah I'm just checking if I there was a modifier that I forgot it's a bit difficult when you play two sides but no there was none okay cool so uh, moving back to the activation phase, the, uh, the action phase of uh, the orange player. Uh, Xiao cannot do much, I think. Maybe it's time to put an um, Akhet in the game because there's a lot of pressure around here and maybe it's time for payback <laughs> for <laughs> Quain. So, what he can do? A swoop four. and heal you may discard a blue card from your hand to heal and adjust an ally instead instead of heal to yourself it will be good for him to heal because he already has two so maybe that's something that i can play uh then uh, say not main cards uh, xiao can do an area of effect damage so Ooh. Oh, deal damage with no defense to each target until they are bloodied. Flash of Jade, that's a great, great attack. Okay, this will be bloody indeed. So, uh, it's time for revenge. Zhao, Tzu Zhao is going to play this card, so they expand their uh, red core. They move up to two, so they go here. And what they do now is they uh, perform an attack uh, meaning that they do damage until the each target is uh, bloodied i remind you bloodied keyword uh, is the keyword that means a champion is considered bloodied when they have half of their hit points or fewer remaining rounding down that means that uh, this is a very strong card 
when with an area of effect affects uh, both of those, both uh, uh, Marius and uh, Kilgore. Marius is there, Kilgore is there. So that means that they both are going to take damage till they're bloodied. They cannot block it. It's true damage. So Marius uh, will have to go round down to three. They already have two. So that means that they need to take two more damage. So uh, they, they are at five because they already had two damage. So they're going to go to four because now they are bloodied. They have a round down half of their uh, health points uh, remaining. That's a, that's a good one. Because with three more damage, they, they're out. Okay, and then the same happens to Kilgore. Kilgore has eight. Ooh, that hurts even more because now Kilgore is going to get three plus one, four out of eight. So uh, Kilgore also becomes uh, bloodied. <laughs> that was a vicious attack. I liked it a lot. Okay, and that's only with uh, my first card. Then, can Xiao do anything more? They can also do. Uh, a direct shot of two the blue core healing tears you move two and you heal two uh, with my yellow core and I have not taken damage so instead I can discard the blue card so I can heal someone else that's not bad so let's say for the benefit of um, I, uh, I would do that, yeah. I would play uh, this card, the Healing Tears. So uh, essentially what he's doing is he's moving up to two. So maybe he can go again here, okay? And then uh, he could heal too, but he is fully, uh, full health. He has his full health, so he can uh, discard the blue card. So I can discard this one from my hand in order to or this one, the swoop, in order to uh, heal an adjacent ally instead, and I can then heal kill Gore, uh, Golder, sorry, uh, by two. So that that's a good. Uh, that was a good one. Okay, but both of those cards are spent, and I have to play uh, my yellow core in order to do so. I still have my blue core, meaning I can do an attack. Why not? Marius has uh, defense, has zero defense. So if they cannot produce a reaction, uh, I will be able to inflict two strength damage and he's critically close to uh, being knocked out, knocked out. So yeah, I'm spending my blue core and I'm attacking. I will also, uh, I don't have to move because I'm next to, already next to Marius. So I inflict my attack with a direct shot of two. I, um, so I can perform it with uh, a strength of two and then I can perform a pull if I wish to. Okay, so it's time for um, uh, the defender to play any reaction cards. Let's see if they won't play any reactions. Oh, that's a good reaction. But the, uh, the purple team will have to expand their yellow core. But look what that does. Uh, enemies adjacent to the target suffer two true damage. Yeah, so he will play the reaction. Okay, so this is a uh, this is from uh, Ma uh, Marius. Let's put it like that. Uh, from this side is from Marius, and this is from uh, Zhao. So Zhao performs a damage of two minus the defense of uh, uh, Marius. Zhao uh, performs an attack of two minus the defense of Marius. Two minus zero. Two. So they gain two more, so they go from four to six. That's a lot of damage. And then uh, we resolve the post-attack effect of uh, the defender. So enemies adjacent, uh, the target, they suffer two true damage. So, both, so Xiao now gets two damage due to the post-attack effect of Marius' uh, reaction card. Okay, this goes out, but in order to play the, that, they expand the yellow core. And uh, then they have a pull one, 
but they cannot pull because they are already at uh, adjacent, adjacent spots. And that's out. There you have it. This was the end of uh, the orange player's uh, turn. That means that now uh, they can refresh their hand. That was a good round, actually. Uh, they draw five new cards, so here's one, and then we shuffle again the discard pile. And draw two, three, four, five. Right, so let's see what did we get. Reaction, attack, 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 and attack. Okay, cool. And this is discarded as well. Forgot to discard it from before. Okay. Right, so. Uh, moving to uh, the next round. Actually, we're in the same round, sorry, moving to the uh, purple player. So the purple player, now they can score victory points. They have two purple champions. Next, adjacent to Ragrill statue, so they score two victory points. And they discard this card. That was a good score, so they already take two victory points. Uh, next to them, so two victory points for them of the five and they also score this one because it's exactly the same have two or more champions adjacent to uh, Ragnar's statue again they receive one victory point for that and they are three out of five so they're close to winning but no, nothing is <laughs> determined yet now uh, they've gone through the scoreboard phase they move through the action phase they pick up their hand the cards and then they see if they can do some damage. They're targeting either Akhet, uh, which has two damage, or Jiao, who has two out of nine. So let's see if they can do some nasty damage. Appetite for Destruction. This is the icon of uh, Kilgore, and he does a direct shot of two. So Kilgore, can move okay so uh, they only have two cores remember because they responded with a reaction card so they spend their red core to play the rentless advance that means that uh, Kilgore can move one and then do a direct shot of two so he moves there or maybe there be closer does a direct shot of two meaning that it's two minus the defense of Xiao which is zero uh, let's see if Xiao if uh, they're going to play any reaction card Ooh, <laughs> they play this revenge. If the attack was not taken out, uh, the attack was not taken out of action. The attacker also suffers uh, the attacks through damage. Okay, so that will be nasty. <laughs> they are both going to take the damage. So uh, again, he's uh, making um, the attack with a direct shot of two minus zero two. That means that the uh, Xiao takes two more uh, and goes to four hit points, okay? But then this backfires to Gilmore, uh, Kilgore because he also takes two uh, and goes from four to six. They're getting <laughs> a lot of damage, both of the sides. Then the card says force one, place Kilgore in the target's original hex. But before doing uh, that, actually this happens during uh, there is no pre or post, it happens during uh, the attack itself. So, force one, let's see the keyword. Force one means uh, the player who played the card with the force effect may move the target up to X hexes in any direction. So, they may move. Um, they may move Zhao one. I'm thinking let them go there. Okay, and then, then we'll have the post-attack effect that we inflicted already on uh, uh, Zhao as well. So, uh, there you have it. This is the red card taken out. And this is a reaction, but in order to play the reaction, they need to have already played the blue core. Okay, oops, sorry, let's go there. This card. Then, they still have a blue core, so maybe, 
mm, they do again with Kilgore they can do one more attack but um, yeah and this is a life steal the attack gains plus two for each ready standard core you control ah this should have been done earlier but I didn't have the yellow in any case let's play the mouth thrash so Kilgore again uh, by playing the blue core Kilgore again moves one closer to engage Zhao uh, he makes an adjustment attack for two two minus are there any reactions no and still it's tough to go with only one active core in your uh, active round so let's keep it like that so he will take the full blow of two minus uh, defense zero two so he takes two more and he also goes to six rapidly our champions are getting a beat up a lot <laughs> it's a vicious battle back and forth but um, um, this is something that um, actually it's part of the game so it also has a push too push two means that it displays Zhao and pushes them to uh, on the opposite side so from there over there and that's here so they discard the remaining card and they draw they draw three and then reshuffle their discard pile to draw two more and have five cards in their hand for uh, uh, the, their upkeep phase. So these are the, the cards they took. Lots of possibilities there. Okay, there you have it so far. So we finished the round, then uh, we go through the challenge, uh, uh, advance the challenge track. So this goes there and we're revealing a challenge card. Have two or more champions in trap hexes. Trap hexes are the hexes that have the trap icon so there are always four active traps plus two more one is here and one is already there so Gilmore um, is already on one of those so with a bit of a clever um, play they may be scoring something on the next turn okay now it's the turn of uh, the orange player they do have a uh, few possibilities there so they're trying to get two heroes on the trap hexes but uh, they have to suffer the they do they have to suffer the damage to do so for the moment they may focus on uh, dealing damage on uh, Zhao because Zhao has six out of nine so with a bit of luck they can uh, really take one uh, champion out so yeah let's do that this looks good so they activate the blue the red core by playing the fireball from a uh, Gwen uh, Gwen is there so this is an indirect shot that means it can go to uh, anywhere so you can really go one two here does not need to have a direct uh, uh, a line of hexes so they perform an attack with a strength of three so this is uh, the action targeting of course Xiao uh, targeting Xiao okay but I'm thinking wait a minute this is a, I drew this card from a, the deck of uh, uh, of the opponent so this should be there so let's put that back so that we are okay so they will have it in their hand so okay we fix that and they should have one more card so that we are fair okay yeah because I mixed the uh, handling both decks I mixed it so um, moving back now to to the orange player again so now the orange player is trying to perform some uh, some attack probably or Kilgore or Marius uh, because uh, they're going to hopefully to get out to both of them and get score this card they cannot score anything now but uh, let's see if they can make a harpoon or swoop of three death from above so you do a swoop of three before attacking and they can attack
they can attack with uh, with uh, their hero directly to Gwen, which she has no. No, they need to attack better. Either Kilgore or Marius, which they are a bit far away. So maybe. Uh, let me remember the swoop I, uh, keyword. What does it mean? Swoop uh, is a terminology that means that um, a swoop is a straight line movement of X hexes where the swooping champion may stay in the same hex row. A swooping champion may move through enemy statues and traps without activating them. Traps do still activate if the champion ends after the swoop. Okay, that's good then because. Uh, if uh, if Akhet makes a swoop of three, one, two, three, they can end up here, and then they can make an area of effect. But ideally, they would have want to make an area of effect with touching more than one. Uh, so ideally, they want. Okay, 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 good, good. So first of all, let's play focus. We only have one card. Uh, sorry, I do have the red one because I didn't play. I have red and yellow core. So let's play um, the red to move one, do a standard action, and uh, deal one damage to an adjacent enemy. Can I deal the damage with uh, another champion than the one that I just moved? Using standard action stone on the, on the player dashboard. This action may be intentionally weaker than action, but the one for some when a player does not draw the course for the champion they need. This standard action may be used one per, once per activation phase. Okay, doesn't say, so I move one and then I can do the damage on an adjacent enemy so it should be from the one that they moved I suppose so not good so anyway I'm spending uh, the red core to move okay no I don't like it I'm not moving with the red core Sorry, let me think of something else. Again... <laughs> Ideally I want to plan, because I like this card a lot. So let's plan this card, so I move one and I plan. So this swoop card will go on top of my uh, deck. With uh, No, because I cannot use a blue. <laughs> I already have the blue. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Okay, so tell you what. Yeah, uh, we play for the yellow. I do for oh, sorry for the red. I move one and deal a damage. So I move here with my with Kilgore, and I do a damage on uh, Kilgore. I move here with Golda, sorry, and I do damage on Kilgore because I expand the standard action of red. So Kilgore gains one more um, damage. So he goes to seven out of eight, very close to being knocked out. And then I still have my yellow. So for the yellow, I perform the plunder. It means I can move two. So I move here. And then I perform the plunder for an adjacent enemy. I can uh, make an attack of uh, strength two. So I play this card. Okay. Let's see if the opposition has any reaction cards. No. Okay, so they'll take the full damage of two minus the defense of uh, the target, which is a uh, Kilgore, two minus one, one. So they will take one damage. But one damage is enough because now they completely destroy a Kilgore. He has eight damage, so uh, the damaged um, champion is transported out of harm's way on the gate 
of um, of the team, so they can come into play next uh, round. And draw one for each damage dealt. So uh, the team can also draw one card for this. Okay. And uh, what they do is uh, the plunder allowed them to level up. Because now Golder has leveled up. First of all, they gain one victory point on their team. So it's 3 to 1 because they knock down one of the enemies. And since they uh, managed to level up, they flip their card. Now they still uh, they do have the same stats, but they do have uh, immune to push ability. So Goldar cannot be pushed. Goldar, I remind you, is this beautiful mini here. Okay, so 3 to 1. Let's see. Uh, then the team has uh, depleted all their uh, cores. So they refresh and draw five more. One, two, three, four, five. Let's have a quick look in the cards. Attack, 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 skill, and skill. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Now, Okay, so it's a purple's player turn. Uh, I think they're going to go for an easy victory point to try to get Xiao out of uh, action and reach four out of five. But in order to do that, I think they're going to use the fireball that we we're discussing before. So then, now things change a bit. No, they don't actually, because Xiao needs three damage and has zero defense. So okay, so they expend. First of all, they should have been flipped. We have them available. Okay, then they spend. They play the fireball, meaning they move one and they can do an indirect uh, shot for range of two to three. So they already are in range with Xiao. Uh, so they deal. Ooh. Ah, if they were close to gold or they will also deal damage to them. That's an uh, opportunity lost. But anyway, it will be brutal enough for Zhao. So uh, they move one. I think they're going to do it so that they position themselves on trap hex. Why not? To gain the victory point if possible. Then uh, they do the... No, they, they, they need to be from minimum of two. So they cannot do the indirect shot from there. So. Let me think then. Yeah. Okay, they all do the indirect shot from there, so they will not move. Okay, actually they're going to move one. So they will do the indirect shot of two to three. One, two, attacking Zhao with a defense with a strength of three. So, uh, Zhao's team has no reaction, so they cannot reply, so they're going to take the damage 3 minus uh, 0, which is the defense, 3. That means that they take a full uh, damage of 3 and they're out of action. And then uh, she would be able to deal 2 extra damage uh, to each champion adjacent to the target, so there is none. But still it's a devastating blow, because by spending... Um, Sorry, it's this side. By spending the red core, uh, she performs the fireball, which is uh, taking out of action Zhao. And she also levels up uh, because she taken an, an hero champion out of action. So she levels up, she gets this ability. When you activate Gwen, decrease the minimum range by one and increase the maximum range by one. Okay, so she's much more effective in terms of range and reaching uh, further areas for destruction so uh, by doing so the purple team gains one more um, victory point so it's four to one and um, Zhao is out of action so let's see if they can uh, okay this will be removed and they will come back into play fully healed but then Akhet may be the next target or I think they're going to push for controlling the trap hex and win the game so in order to do that I think they need to move Marius 
who actually Marius is close to dying as well so he only needs one hit so is there any heal that he can do no damn it I think it will be better to have a fully healed uh, champion there but um, uh, okay uh, there's not much that he or she can do uh, because we cannot move or could we? Yeah, 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 we'll do that. So, uh, we spent one... We spent one core, one yellow core, to move uh, Kilgore. Uh, the first movement will be on the deployment area. So, one, two, coming here, because we made the standard action. And then we play the blue core, and we play the mouth rush, so uh, we uh, move one on the trap hex. Okay. And perform an, uh, an attack with a strength of uh, uh, two minus uh, the defense. There are no reactions played from uh, the orange team. Goldar has a strength of uh, defense of one, so two minus one, he will get one damage there. And there is a push two, that means that he's pushed one and he cannot go two uh, through the effect of this card. We discard our cards, we refresh our cores, and we finish this round as well. Draw five more cards, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm a bit, uh, it's a bit difficult to handle both sides. <laughs> But I think I'm doing well. So these are the cards, one defense, one uh, reaction, and one attack, second attack, third attack and fourth attack. Okay, that looks good. We're close to the end, I think. So, uh, end of the turn, we progress uh, the challenge cards. This go there, a new one is revealed. The card says control the destruction area. So you need to have at least more champions around this uh, red ring from your uh, opponent to win this card. But this is still not uh, in a position to be scored, it's just an upcoming uh, challenge. So that's uh, the situation here. Okay, so uh, it's uh, the turn of the orange player. So have at least two champions leveled up? No, they don't. They only have one leveled up. Sorry, they only have... Uh, they have none leveled up. Right? Uh, because he was taken out, I think, yeah. Okay, then uh, they think, they see if they have two or more champions on, on trap hexes, they have none, and maybe they want to position better themselves for controlling the red uh, area of distraction. So, in order to do that, I think they're going to play, but it's a bit difficult because uh, the purple team is very close to winning the game even if they do nothing because they will have two champions on trap hexes but I don't think that they can uh, do a lot uh, even though now they only control one trap hex but anyway so let's uh, let's have them play something different so one of the things that they will do is I'll play uh, bucket with uh, my red core I will uh, intentionally go on the trap hex okay trigger it so I lose two health so I go from two to four like that okay but the reason I've done that is now I can pull a new trap I'm going to place it here so it'll be less inviting for them and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a direct shot of an action of two so it is two and then I push um, the, the attack towards uh, uh, Gwen, who has only six health points. So there is a strength of one, minus her defense zero. Um, do they have a reaction? They do, but I think they're going to keep their hand full for flexibility. So they're not going to... Actually, they, uh, they may do. But I want to play something with uh, Ma uh, Marius. It will be pity. Uh, 
not to do so because uh, yeah actually let's do it okay they expand their red core so they play this effect so they have plus one and the target gains plus two until the end of uh, the turn after the attack so it's one minus one no damage done but they get to push two but there is a statue so they cannot be pushed that direction okay so basically uh, uh, this effect uh, was an opportunity lost from uh, the orange team okay and in order to do that uh, the darkest armor as a reaction was played from the purple team but they are minus one core as you can see moving forward they have the blue and the yellow core the orange team so i think they're going to try to control and uh, make sure that they control them the core so they spent the, the red area of destruction, so they spent blue, they're going to invest on the red area because they will move also and give them one victory point. So one, two, because they spent the red, um, sorry, the red uh, standard action, and then they perform, I think they can do damage with gold, Goldor, no. He's out of action. He has been seeing a lot of action, but there are no cards for me to activate him. So what they're going to do is they're going to spend also their yellow core to move one, two, and be in a position to better control the uh, destruction area. So there you have it. They played all the hand. They refreshed their cores, and they draw five new cards. Four, five. These are the cards. Okay, something for. Zhao, something for Goldar, something for Goldar, uh, skill for uh, Akit, and a reaction for Goldar as well with the defense value. That's good. Now, uh, as this is the case, have two of your champions leveled up, that's not the case for the orange player. But uh, what is indeed the case is. Uh, no, they don't have two on trap hexes, they only have one. So they're still not fulfilling this condition. So we just have to play a normal round. Their bet is to go for Akhet because uh, it has four out of seven and see if they can uh, make full attacks on, uh, on Akhet in order to uh, destroy, destroy them. My cards are all about uh, Marius and Kilgore. So let's see if Marius, if Marius is far away from uh, Akhet. It's a pity. Uh, dash 2 and Life Steal. That's a good one actually. So if I move on to here and I dash to, I'll go there. I'm still further away from uh, uh, Akhet, so I won't be able to do any damage. Still need to do three, but wait a minute. I take Marius, who is full, full on health. No, he's not full on health. He has six. <laughs> if you dash, uh, do you activate uh, the traps? Let me check. Dash, straight line movement where the dashing champion would just stay in the same hex row or hex grid. Doesn't say, so I suppose it's activated. Therefore, I will uh, lose my hero, I think, this way. So, a change of plans. Mm. And Kilgore has uh, full health. And he has this um, attack. I think we're going to go for that. Let's make a run for it and see if we can uh, win the game by taking Akhet out of action. So, Kilgore is playing um, their blue core to move two. One, two. Okay. And then we have um, this one, which is uh, the Fury. So, they spent the yellow core. Okay, and by doing so, uh, they can move two. One, two, over there. 
and by doing so they can perform uh, an attack of strength 2 minus Akhet's defense 1 that would be 1 they have a reaction card so they're going to play it so 2 minus 2 0 and they cancel out first we have this the attacker suffers fear 2 uh, the attacker is um, Kilgore. Let's see fear keyword. Fear means if an action or reaction applies fear, the champion who suffered the fear must dash X in a direction of their choice, as long as away from the source of fear. So they must uh, move two. Oh, that's a bad one. Okay, I don't want to go very far away not to get either this one or this one. Or that one but if I go there I'm very far away from action thing and also also I'll do that I'll go there and take this damage so I'm stunned that means that I need to uh, discard one card from my hand and then okay I discard one hand I don't have many in any, in any case and then I heal one uh, but I didn't take any damage, I was the attacker, so there you have it, nothing happened, it all cancelled out nicely in this um, case. And the taken, I take a new trap and place it, for example, here. Kilgore is sitting on one uh, uh, trap and Akhet is sitting on one trap. I'm always checking this uh, condition, this challenge condition. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, that's that. They discard their hand, refresh their course, draw five new cards, and they end their round. One, two, three, four, five. Quick glance at the cards. Reaction, attack, attack, reaction, and skill. Now, Moving the challenge cards. Now this is in effect. And uh, there is a new card coming here. Control the creation area, which is the yellow one. Okay, that changes a lot of things. So, starting the next round, we go through the uh, activation phase the, of the orange player. Scoreboard phase. They do control the destruction area because they have two. That means they grasp, they grab this card and gain one more victory point. So it's four to two. Uh, at least two of your champions are leveled up. That's not the case here. And have two or more champions in trap hexes. That's not the case either. Okay. I think this is going to be very valuable because it will give two victory points and will be the determined factor for who uh, gains more the upper hand on the back the battle. So, uh, the next thing that they're going to do is they will try to take out Marius for sure uh, because it makes sense, obviously. So, they do have yellow and blue. And Marius has uh, zero defense. Okay. So, let's say that uh, we expend one blue core. I will first do the skill. I spend the yellow core and do this. I can move two. Okay, so I go uh, one. And I think I'm going to intentionally uh, step on the hex because this way, now, uh, two orange players are sitting on two trap hexes. So it's worth taking the, ooh, two damage. Anyway, so I go from one to three since he has eight threshold and then he draws one card I'll need to shuffle my hand I think it's a it's a fair battle playing against uh, yourself <laughs> okay uh, so I draw one right then 
uh, Goldor's allies gain plus one strength and plus one movement until the end of the round. That doesn't do a lot. But what I really want to do is then apply... Um, apply uh, this card. So I'm spending the blue core to perform a movement of two. Which I don't move at all. And make uh, an effect area of effect which uh, unfortunately will cause damage no no will cause damage to both of them that's good okay so there you have it and then I push one uh, okay so do they reply with a, a reaction they do enemy suggestion to the target suffer uh, two or plus one attacker is not adjacent and the uh, and the target discard gains plus two no i think they're going to cancel it out so they play this one so they spend their yellow core the arcane shield okay and they attack both this and that with one one of them takes um, uh, marius is going to take the defense so one minus uh, one from the defense of the, the response card, reaction card, zero, so he survives, makes sense, and she will take one damage, and it's going to uh, to be nasty, I'm telling you, and now we have an, a post effect of, um, of push one, so push one, do you push multiple? Um, I think all of them should be pushed. Makes sense. Target champions are pushed X hexes. So they're both pushed one. So this goes there and this goes here. She activates the trap. So this backfires and gives three more damage to her. <laughs> okay. And this came out of nothing. So three damage means that she's reaching rapidly. Four out of six. And that's a potential risk. And then she draws one. Uh, one trap to place it on the on the trap hex. So uh, you see that uh, uh, that all trap hexes are blocked, and if this is the case, all all trap hexes are blocked by champions and or traps. The trap token may be placed anywhere adjacent to a trap hex that is not blocked by champion or statue. So it has to be here okay good so this cancels out uh, this is from the purple team and this is from the orange team they finish the round so they refresh their hand discard those cards and draw five new one two three four five a quick look skill attack skill attack and skill okay right now turn off the orange player uh, they do have one plus one two heroes on trap hexes so they score this one of course this could not be avoided so they take two uh, more trophies and they are declared the winner because uh, they reached and surpassed, uh, to be honest, um, four uh, five victory points. So the purple team consisted of Gwen, uh, Kilgore, and Marius are the winners, and they have defeated the orange team consisted of Akhet, Goldar, and Zhao. There you have it. This was the live playthrough of Super Fantasy Brawl. Cool stuff. Mm -hmm.